Hey, good day, Paul and Mark. Hey, Trinity. Jack, yeah, I'll, I'll take Jack. Mm -hmm. I really hope this isn't going to be a nightmare. Hmm, oh, looks like that's already coming off. Oh, uh, well, I, I suppose Jack differentiates me from the million other Pauls, and I used to be called Jack all the time for that very same reason. Uh, so, I'm cool with Arthur. Anyway, this is a, um, yeah, a smash touch screen. It's also got really busted up hinges as well, this one here. The LCD, I think, is okay. Come to think of it, I probably should check that. I'm pretty sure it's okay. What sort of connector we got there? Oh, yeah, that crazy HP one. Don't know what the deal is with these uh let's see if i got that one yep got that one uh, these laptop makers always coming up with new and exciting power connectors i don't know maybe they think this one will be the final one we'll ever need damn i need a bit of power brick on this side This rescue should do the trick. I'm fairly sure I tested it a while ago. Yeah, it seems like it's alright. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we're pretty safe. I might just zoom out a bit here. Move across a bit. I should move up a bit. Yeah, it's probably a better view. And let's turn off autofocus. Ah, that should set me good. Right, let's turn that off. Let's see, Jacob Rosada. How's it going with your business? Uh, it's been a little bit quiet, but that's pretty normal for this sort of season, this time of the year around here. Um, a lot of people are putting money into Christmas presents for their kids, and things like phones and laptops and whatnot can take a back seat. To be fair, this one actually has been in the shop for quite a while now. And the person finally got around to dropping off the deposit for the job. I already quoted him. Oh, come on. I will say, this isn't my normal bench for doing these particular repairs, but I'm doing it on here for the sake of the video. I should get a second one of these um, webcams for the purpose of um, working off my other workbench. Let's see. Okay, that all looks pretty good and steady. Hey, Tony. Yeah, this is a touch one, but it's fortunately it's a split one, so at least I don't have the dramas that I had with the previous time. Speaking of which, um, that machine that I had dramas with back in May, I think it was, I finally got the right screen for it. 
and hopefully they'll be out of my hair next week. It's fitted, it worked straight away. The biggest drama I had was um, the supplier of the screen did not pack it very well. The boxing, the box that it was in was pretty good, but they didn't pack it the uh, empty space inside very well. And as a consequence, it, a couple of the little bits and pieces got bent, much to my dismay. Okay, geez, you want to be a tricky bastard, don't you? Oh, there we go. You come out that way. Geez, it's almost like I have to detach that. Uh, Detach that flex before I get any further. Where to put my beloved spudger? Where are you? There we go. Maybe it does come out easier, but see this. I don't know if you can see it. No, it's a little bit out of range. This cord here is under far too much tension. You gotta be careful though, because this LCD is obviously functional. I probably can do this an easier way. Maybe the touch screen will come off with heat from the front. But um, this, whoop, something just, someone's latches just let go. Yep, there you go. So there's a fun thing with PCs, as I've said before. Is you, every single time is a new experience. There we go. I swear these are going to come off somehow. And half the time you don't know whether you're clipping something or breaking something. That's... break off. Okay, at least I've got some room to move now. It's going to be fun getting this all back in though. <laughs> Come on, just unhitch from there, thank you. Okay, I don't really need to. Uh, there we go. Finally. Recently smashed a brand new Lenovo X1 Carbon. Wow, 200 quid. Oh, LCD okay, but cracked glass from the camera. Uh, not good. Yeah, but I'm not really a. That's what I hate half the time with these situations. I mean, I do love the. Standard 15.6 or 10, or yeah, the standard LCD with no touch, and you just like I had one today. It was a 13.3 came in, and it really was a simple. There weren't even any screws. It's just all friction fit and clips. And I just grabbed it, swapped it out. Ten minutes later, I was done, and off I went. Okay, I'm getting a feeling I have to take this whole bezel. Yeah, this whole bezel's. The screen's got to come out of the bezel, which includes this, which includes the camera, which includes everything else. What are you hooked on? Oh, nice. What are you? Some sort of foam backing. I'll have to get this camera off here. So half the time you don't know whether you're fighting against uh, clips or two-sided tape. Looks like in this case it's two-sided tape. It's fine enough, you've done them once or twice, but first time around, not so much. And the other trouble is a lot of the 
videos you see on the internet aren't for the specific model that you have. Alright, so we've got that cleared, that's good. We'll need to keep this cleared because I've got to fix the hinges on that. Oh great, there we go, there's something come loose there, what were you? You're that guy there. Oh boy. So we've got some fun ahead. That belongs there and keeps it stable. Not so stable now, are you? Oh. G'day, Jabara. A week in the hospital. Oh, what happened there? You okay now, I take it? 8 degrees Fahrenheit here. Driving in an E150 garbage heat. Hey, Spectre. Spector. Sorry, I almost called you Spectator. No heat service calls. Oh, Mr. Taylor, your package isn't here yet, but that's normal. Assuming you meant when you said in the comments uh, you're sending one, I think. If not, no worries. Just make sure I didn't misinterpret what you said. Well, it's, it's about 28 degrees here at the moment, I think. Yeah, let me check the... Let me check my multimeter, which is an expensive thermometer. Let's see. No, no, 25. There we go. Nice, pleasant 25. That's because we've got a bit of a breeze here. Still recovering. Oh, okay, so they've sent you home for recovery. Which, in a lot of cases, often is the better choice. People do generally recover better in their own residence. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to bother disconnecting that one. Because that's going to be a pain in the posterior to reapply. Who's going to get in the way? Alright. Alright, we're going to put this aside for the moment because we're going to have to glue up hinges after afterwards. And let's see. Uh, Wayne, yeah, the charger. Is that what you're referring to? I'd be mean to actually make a, ask you a question about that because I wasn't quite sure what you're inferring. Shut up, Gecko. No one wants to hear from you. Looks like the panel comes out easy enough, and the panel looks like a fairly yeah. The panel's a fairly standard matte finish, 40 pin, 15.6, which is good. The slimline versions. And here we have the broken bezel. I'll just put this into a protective bag. Let's see, Are you too small? Ah, too small. Put it into another box. I don't remember it, so. Okay. Well, the only trouble with the 25 degrees here is that it only is happening at, uh, well, it's just past midnight now. During the day, it's obviously quite a bit less pleasant. Okay, so we do still have to separate this. Like I've, the glass is one thing, but then I still have the plastic inner frame, uh, outer frame. So it looks like we're going to be up for a bit of fun like the last time. At least I've got a bit more of a chance this time of not completely fecking it up. Let's check that we've got a match. Oh, it's looking good there. Okay. Nice when things seem to actually match up. Eight ports, 40 watt mains power, LCD readout, volt and amps forward. Wayne, have you had a chance to try one of those to see 
how um, well regulated they are. Right, anyone want to give recommendations on heat for this one? Oh, yuck. That's disgusting. That needs a clean. I'll be back. I really shouldn't leave that laptop lying there. I'm bound to get up in a hurry and trip over it. It's just the way it goes. I'll do. I'll get this laptop out of the way and put it into the little box. Safe and sound. So what are we going to go for? We're going to go for, well, it looks like it's peeling out almost. So I'm going to play at maybe 150 with no nozzle. Times like this I want a adjustable holder for these so you can have the nozzle sort of like just sitting there and then you can move it I suppose the, the other option is to get one of those heat pads which I have been meaning to get ok we're going to need a buttload more air give us full air thank you so I don't want to melt the plastic obviously We'll just give it a bit of a warm up here and see what we can get. There, yeah, Mark, this is a Tenma hot air station, which is basically the same thing. It's the same one that uh, Jason Vilmer of STS and Chris Long use, but it's just got a different faceplate. I need to get myself a quick hot air station, though. And then this one will become the general purpose. I need hot air that's semi controlled. Except you know if you use the good old spudger. I'm just trying to get a feel for what's holding it in there, like the type of glue. Hopefully it's not too much like the stuff that they use on Samsung tablets. Okay, let's go up to 170, see so if we can get a lift. Yeah, Mark, I am pretty happy with it. The only reason why I want to go up to the um, quick is for the presets. Like so this one would continue to be constantly used with things like um, iPhone. Oh man, I'm cutting into the bezel. So any trouble when using metal tools? So I'm a little bit concerned about cutting myself here. It's loca. Oh jeez. What's your recommendation then, Wayne? Do they have that adhesive in there? 
No, they do not. They do not have this, um, how thick is this? Uh, well, it looks like I'll be running around trying to find replacements for that foam. I'm just trying to find my cal- oh, there they are. You're about roughly about somewhere 0 0.6 to 1 mil. So, what temperature should I use to get loker off? Guitar string trick, and the, uh, the other thing I've sometimes used is dental floss, though it's not quite as good. Alright, molly wire. You're just more thinking I need to saw through this using the wire. I'm glad I didn't try to just peel it off from the front. God damn, that's hot. Okay, we've got the separation going on. Ninety-five on the preheat. Yeah, all right. Well, I'm sitting on two twenty at the moment with this hot air station, and it is getting it to detach. So ninety-five would be about right. comes bursting through the other side. Okay, that's probably a little hot actually. Don't you dare reach me.
Yeah, it's funny you should mention playing cards. I was thinking of getting some yesterday. And then today it was such chaos because I was dealing with getting a new couch today. For the last two years we've been we've had a single seat couch in our lounge room. We've got no carpet on the floor. Um, the second seat is basically a ma single mattress on the floor and the old single seat couch lost all its strapping so when you sit down on it you end up relying purely on the good grace of a cushion in there or <laughs> you end up sitting on the um, wood beam cross beam that is at the front so yeah, it wasn't really the nicest. Anyway, so that's all fixed up. Uh, we uh, got a new couch, two-seater. Still a buttload more money than I wanted to spend, but I guess sometimes you got to do these things. I'm almost tempted in the future when people say, hey, I've got a touch screen that needs replacing to um, treat them as if they are family members ask me about Windows. And I'll go, what? Oh, I don't know anything about that. Maybe if I can just incrementally push this out. This is why I won't really deal with Samsung uh, screens. Just, I don't know how you guys do it. You drive me insane. Ah, oh, sweet Bridget, that's warm. They fixing things? Making progress here now. Except it's warm. I need a wooden finger or something. There we go. I'm not caring about the glass at all. It's just the bezel I care about. I don't want to... deforming too much.
If you're running, I'm wondering, I'm running at 160 at the moment on this. This has already taken way more time than I like. Okay, pull, don't get... Don't get greedy. Nah, let's have a look at chat while I'm doing this. Samsung Tab S2 glass only. That's okay, well, I'll put that on my list to not do. <laughs> yeah, some people say, yeah, you should do these things, Paul. You're missing out. It's like, nah, I'm not missing out. There are other people in the next town who are willing to do such things for the price. Yeah, some ridiculously cheap price. And I say, well, good on him. But uh, I don't want to be the guy sitting there doing that every day and wondering, excuse me, wondering if I'm going to get my $20 for it. I mean, I could be, I'd rather spend the time on some open source software like Open Board View or something. Which is probably why I'm not fantastically rich, or even rich. But I am happier. But I would like to be both. I've just got to sort myself out. It's always been a bit of a... Uh, God damn it. Ooh, now you're getting tricky. You're getting tricky because you've not a full bezel there. So you're not going to do another one again. All right, fair enough. Oh, that reminds me. I do have a tablet I've got to sort out in here. They need a battery replaced in it. They've already bought the battery. Not exactly which sure which tablet it is, but I'm fairly sure it's one of those ones like the S4 case, where it tricks you into thinking maybe you have to remove it at the 
colour split on the bezel. But it's a lie. Honest to God, I'm half expecting to slip at some point here and have a six inch shard of glass go right into my arm. I mean, I sincerely hope not. Make an interesting YouTube ranking. Crazy Aussie Tech slices arm in half for YouTube ranking. Man, I'd rather go out and get beaten up by a kangaroo, I think. Come on. Because it's very thin up the top here, it's not giving me a lot to uh, lever down on. So if I pull on the frame, it doesn't really impart enough separation stress between the glue and the glass. Come on, we're almost home. I suppose worst case scenario, I can always just order another frame. I don't know if you can, that's the trouble. Honestly, if I could, I'd just say, uh, send me a replacement touch glass with frame already intact. I and mean, that's what I do with the Samsungs. Because I'm lazy and it's just, yeah, it's just a big waste of time to stuff around with that for a one-off job. Different if you're doing it every day, I guess. There we go. <sighs> well, that adhesive is actually mostly intact, so I probably could put the new one straight back on. Some bits are a little bit lifted up here. Or should I genuinely get it off? What do you guys think? Should I try and put the new screen touch straight on? Or am I courting certain agony by using the old stuff? Money is overrated. Yeah, you know, I'm going to disagree. <laughs> I like my money. Money is a facilitator. And half the time I think people, who, like the rich people who say money isn't everything, and I mean I get their point, but half the time I think they're saying that so the poor people don't try and take their money. So really, no, go away, this isn't what you want, you really don't want the money. And you're like, yeah, spending it away. Yeah, yeah. it's a scam. See Patreon back down on their fees restructuring. Yeah, they really did cop a lot of backlash on that. I mean, I could understand sort of what they were going for, but they executed that pretty damn poorly. I, I think the outrage was maybe a little over the top from people, but uh, yeah, uh, well, I don't use Patreon, so I guess I can't really say anything. Nope, you're courting certain agony. Oh, come on, Wayne. I don't have any of this uh, two-sided tape that they're using. What am I supposed to do then? Where, I better get some tape. Someone want to link me to some tape in Australia. That This kind of looks like that uh, red Tessa tape.
But seriously, man, it's dead set flat, mate. And it's sticky too. Yeah, I, I didn't get to see... Um, what's his name? Bloody hell, there's a screw under here. How does a screw fit into the situation? What? That... So I'm guess yeah, okay, well, the tape's coming off. This really does feel like that super sticky red tape. Duct tape. <laughs> if only. Yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on with that screw, unless that was just... Um, all I can think of with this screw... Is that... No, it wasn't that. Um, yeah, I'm a little confused now about that. We'll stick it into our little tray of parts. I have no idea where they belong. Well, I know where it came from, so... Hey, Cormac. Welcome to the hack job show where nothing is done right. The dodgy brothers. Except I'm the only one here, so it's not a brothers. It's just the dodgy dude. Making professionals squirm and bleed from the eyes all over the world. Oh man, this stuff is... Stuck the stuff is stickier than snot. <sighs> I mean, realistically, you gotta forgive me for not really having dealt with this stuff. But I mean, I've been here doing this work for uh, over five years now here um, in this capacity, and this is the first one I've ever encountered. So this is the end. That's the trouble. Most every machine that comes in is a new deal. Yeah, Wayne, I think I'm I'm going to kick your butt on this because um, I've noticed the tape actually has specific allowances for the various holes in this frame. And so when I reapply whatever I'm going to reapply, it's not going to have those holes. Oh, I am not doing OCA UV cured. No, not going to do that. I'm going to lay down some tape. But, like I said, it's going to have to wait a couple of days. That's not the biggest issue anyway. I've got uh, hinges to fix on this, and the person's not in a tremendous hurry. I mean, she's been here since, like, October. Yeah, well, this isn't low cut. This is... I mean, maybe it is on the tape, but it's just a bundle of tape. Very strong, double-sided tape. It's not like that previous one I had where it generally was glued in, I agree. That last one was a horror. If I ever see one of those laptops again, I am going to just... <sighs> I hate to say it, I'm going to probably go like Macaulay Corkin or something, stick my hands in my face and go running off in the corridors. <laughs> I don't want to see one of them again. I actually lost quite a bit of money on that in the end. Right. Well, at least the bezel's okay. Hi, right, G'day Dragon. Good to see you. Oh, fixing... Th yeah, I'm going to kill you guys. This is why I shouldn't do this stuff on stream, because I get misled. I need to... I need to work on my personal sense of... Um, belief. That's in the bin. No, putting that aside, we're going to strip this thing down now for the hinges. Oh, I hate you guys. Oh, 
I thought I could trust the internet. I thought the internet was all about trust and help, and instead it's deceit and lies and conflicting opinions and cats. Lots of juicy cats. And, uh, and porn. Uh, let's get into the hinge on this one. This is going to be interesting. I don't know if I can close that up properly now. Oh, sweet. Well, that was due to come out anyway. Well, I'll tell you what, Wayne, you and uh, Fixing Things can argue amongst each other about that. I won't be using the OCO liquid, though. I will be just getting more tape. I'm not going to UV cure that thing. Oh, son of a... Oh, no. Alright, well, that's a problem. So... Hello, I'm Mr. Broken of Hinge. I'm a little unhinged as a personality. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's a crapping deal breaker. So there we go. Uh, you see that? <coughs> Crap. I'm going to have to get a whole new hinge assembly on that. Well, this person's... That means at least... I don't have to open up and uh, do any JB welding, but it does mean I'm going to have to find a replacement. That's all right. It's easy. It's Christmas time. There'll be lots of stores open, and I'll have no trouble finding. Great. I did have one of these events a while ago, and it snapped off more around about in the middle here. And it was, the design was different. It had a wider, um, wider bit of body there. And I must have tried three or four times to rebond that with all different bracing. I, in the end, I really need to just braze it. But uh, yeah, it's pretty much is the case of once these things snap, give up, just order in a replacement and. Don't even try and rebond them, rebraze them, or anything. It's just not going to work. Or maybe it will if you're very skilled. I'm not one of those people, so that's out of the question. At least with brazing. The only time I was any good at brazing was when it was actually plumbing, and that was when we were using leaded solder with the plumbing. <laughs> Um, which probably explains a few things about my mental state. All right, well, that's um, this laptop's off the list then until I can get the spares. So I'm going to need some fresh tape and I'm going to need that hinge arm. Have... Fixing the. Yeah, I saw that. I saw Lewis uh, paying out on Jason for recommending people re hot their CPUs. Uh, Jason's a. Great influence on people in the wrong way there. <laughs> I, I I did message, I did message Jason to let him know that that's what happened. I sent him off to it. Hopefully we'll get a laugh out of that. All right. Uh, hopefully my plumber's butt isn't showing too much. And if it is, oh well. Ah, oh, jeez. My frame is uh, bonding to the wrong things. I'll put it into these boxes. I gotta say, if you're in Australia, uh, these guys are really good. This is a parcel sent from uh, Broadway Computers. They're down in Melbourne. And they use these fantastic boxes to send their screens, keyboards, things like that. Okay, not so much the keyboards anymore, but for the screens, good parts are like really solid. They pack them well. They come overnight on toll priority. I've 
really happy. I'm going to be very sad if they ever close up business. On the other hand, the people that sent me um, another screen, they can go and they really need a lesson on how to pack stuff because they suck for a job. Funnily enough, they use the same uh, box, but they just suck at it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is a sent it express post, which is a day slower here. But this is what they use for filler. They put cardboard in there to fill up the gap, and then the screen that was in there was probably like that. And it got knocked around and all that, and bent up tabs. And it's like, you idiots. So all you had to do was, you know, pack it properly. You got a great box. It's the same type as what um, Broadway uses. Now take advantage of that. Don't waste it by doing a shitty job with your bubble wrapping. Idiots. Yeah, well. Just abracadabra it. Yeah, okay, I'll do that. Yeah. If it ain't broke, you're not trying to. Yeah, toll is really good here. Uh, I can I get the stuff overnight from Melbourne, except sometimes on a Friday afternoon here, the toll person will get to around about four o'clock, and if they haven't delivered all their parcels, they take it back to Townsville and they hold it until Tuesday, uh, Monday. Sorry, um, I had a great big rant the other week about that. They did it two weeks in a row, completely screwed me over. And I finally got a reply back from, and they're like, oh, can you send us information on any other events that have happened? So now I'm going to go through and find all the prior delivery attempts where they completely fucked it up. So, uh, chat. All right. APAC notebooks for hinges. Yeah, um, I was going to try see if Broadway's got them. Otherwise, yeah, APAC is another option. Uh, what have I got in here? Oh, I'll go get that tablet that I need to put the battery in. May as well. Let me just go find it. It won't be a second. Yeah, I remember this one now. Uh, I'm not going to enjoy this much because this is a really disgusting tablet and I mean disgusting in a literal sense because it is covered with sticky gritty residue of um, well, yeah, this is going to come across ah stop it it's a smoker's um, tablet I should say a really bad smoke. I mean, I've got plenty of other equipment from people who smoke, and that's not a problem. That's not my issue. But when it gets to that point where they do it so much that all their stuff in the house has this sticky, gritty thing on it, and it's like, ah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, I mean, I get it. They just, you know, they don't realize it most of the time, but I shouldn't make big complaints about it, but it just is a little bit, a little bit icky. Okay, we'll get those out. I mean, I've got family members who smoke, and none of their stuff's like this. Okay. Pretty sure this one breaks. Yeah, it does. Here we go. Top side steam line. Yeah, let's get a zoom in on this. Come on, you can come in. Oh, good on you fixing things. Good on you, mate. <laughs> I should be able to get this one off my fingernails. Hopefully I don't bend my fingernail back like I did the other day. That was a howler. I was trying to get somebody's case off, funnily enough, for a tablet. There was a Galaxy 8 uh, Tab A. And uh, the casing was a little more resilient than I expected. And next thing, my fingernail gives away. And it's like, whoop, yep, yep, that one fell, folded back nicely. 
customer looked all horrified that uh, my fingernail was looking like that. I wasn't too happy either. Mostly because it hurt. So, yeah. Yeah. Really, it makes me... Uh, you start to get in there a bit and you want to go for another shot at my fingernail, don't you? You get a really feel for the people who went through those sort of torture regimes and the wars, or just any torture where that happens. And that's not even the worst they do. This person said they had been hacking at it for a little while trying to get it off. I said, it's very difficult. I said, yeah. And you see the... Can you see that? Uh, you can just see a streak mark where they've been... Tried to use something. Alrighty. That's interesting. That's detached there. Must have come off when I did that. Unless it was them. Alright. You watch this puzzle. It probably is not even a battery issue. I've had this before where it seems like it's a battery issue. It doesn't charge and whatnot. And it turns out it's something else. Yeah, this is the same song. Oh man, but I still use this old magnifying glass occasionally. SMT two eleven. Anyway, I haven't saddening suspicion this might not be a battery problem. The battery looks fairly good to me. Then again, happy to be proven wrong. So I got a couple of Samsung tablets that have come in with suspected dead batteries, but they end up just being dead. Come on, magic up. Come on. Ah, oh, come on. There you go. This one got the cables reversed on it. No, no, they actually got the polarity right on those ones. I've had a couple of batteries come in and the cable colours are all wrong. So the black and the red are swapped. Ah, I was supposed to get that in first. Oh well. Idiot. Here's some of the idiot this time. There we go. You power up, bro. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I'll pull these ones. Yeah, they don't have any tape on them. They just they got little, little uh, keyway latches. Oh, yeah, just keyways and then flanges that go in. Yeah, you sound alive. Lucky me. Let's see if it even charges though. That. I could be celebrating a little early here. Yeah, where's my long charge cable? Charge cable, I summon you. Charge cable. Charge cable. I tell you, I bought a bunch the other week and I've already misplaced them. Mia, what are you doing stealing my chair? Hmm? You stole my chair again. Hmm? Uh. Arguing with the cat over who owns the office chair in the other office. Naturally, she owns it. Mm. 
Boom, boom. What do we got? We're charging at uh, yeah, close to 500. So that's good enough. Cover the entire back of battery with Tessa tape for the next tick. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> you sound like a nice. <laughs> That'd be unduly cruel. There we go. Well, that's good. 57%. What was that that just flashed up? It kind of looked a little bit uh, like I shouldn't have seen that. Single frame. What are you doing? I don't know. Lucky me, it's just a, it's just a baby. Nothing. Well, well Paul, yeah, I mean, those inline USB meters are so cheap to get. Uh, this one, sure, I made this one myself, but uh, you can get those $4 ones off eBay so cheap now. I mean, $4. Hell, they're probably even $3 now. There's a couple of them. Blah, 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 blah. There's a couple of things I miss on them. Let's see, power off. Like this one, I have my cumulative milliamp hour, but I've also got my current um, trip on it. So if I go over a certain current level, it disconnects. Um, the other thing is, pardon me, I think it's this button or this one, I can't remember. But if you've, say, you've got an iPhone and you haven't got a home button on it and it keeps shutting down and you want to bring it back to life, uh, one trick is to pull the cable, as you know, pull the cable out, put it back in. I got sick of doing that, so I'll just put a button here which detect, uh, detaches the power while you're holding it down and it simulates having that disconnect without having to physically do it, which saves me a bit of time. Just small things that I run into when I'm working on bits and pieces, and since it's my own design, I can flash it to however I want, change the behavior. I find the visibility a lot better on this as well from a distance. There's a new set that I've got, so I was trying out, and they use those really small OLED displays, and I have to say, I'm really not a fan of them. They're a lot less readable than I was expecting. All right, let's put this back on. Ah, beautiful. What are you doing coming back on for? Reckon the old battery was fine, be the typical Samsung low battery error. Let's have a look, see what the multimeter says. Yeah, the old battery is fine. I mean, 3.9 volts. Oh, well. Can't really test the internal resistance on that one, but... I mean, it hasn't got any puffing at all, or any sort of surface defects. Like, you know, with the iPhone batteries, you can tell straight away when they're starting to die. Often they've got a sort of a... a, a 
like you've got a bit of gravel underneath it, just like real ripples, or of course it thickens up a bit. But yeah, I gotta admit, this one feels pretty standard, pretty okay. Oops. What are you... What? What's going on? Oh, because I'm leaning it on there, that's why. <laughs> Is it put the bench top power supply on the battery for a minute? Be as good as new. Yeah. Well, it'll certainly be uh, putting out a good flame if I set the voltage right. Yeah, I think this is good. <laughs> Wait a minute, I do charge my Apple Lithiums like that a fair bit now. What I'll do is I'll set it to usually 4 volts and either half amp or uh, maybe 1 amp if I'm in a hurry. Constant current up to 4 volts and then once it hits 4 volts it just switches over to constant voltage mode. Alright, that's all working. That's good. I'll consider that a success, even though it probably wasn't even needed. You will probably be their charger, that's all dodgy. Anyway, they gave me the battery and they said they wanted it swapped, so I complied. Yeah, it's not going to sit in so nicely, is it now? Okay, what else we've got? When they get too low, nothing but jump starting will get... Oh, right, yeah, okay, that, yep. Is it the, well it can't be electronics in these ones, because that one read out all right. But I know, usually if they get below 3 volt, that's typically when the protection circuitry will jump in. Um, since technically lithium shouldn't get below 275, and you still want to charge them. But between 275 and 3, you can do the trickle charge on them safely. Uh, usually around about one tenth rate, or is it one twentieth rate? I can't remember. It doesn't matter. And then once you're above three volts, you can go to your one C rate, not one amp, one C. So whatever the capacity is, say if it's a three thousand milliamp hour battery, you can go at three amps, in theory. Uh, what are we going to do now? Could be pawn shop charger. Yeah, it could be. Okay, ITMT. Uh, no, the with the HP, we've got the glass off, the touch glass. That was a pain in the posterior. I've got to get some tape for it to put a new one on. And then the hinge arm. I thought it was a broken hinge inside the laptop assembly. I thought it broke broken clear because, I mean, we've got so many of those happening. But it turns out it was actually the metal arm in the screen frame that had snapped so that's where the issue was so I'm gonna have to order the tape and the new f um, arm and then I can get back to it so, so we'll just mark this as this is 20 uh, it's an old battery 2013 so it's it is four years old so yeah, it could well be playing up in that way. Maybe what the problem is, is it's uh, sagging under load. I haven't got my load tester here. I could put a you know, two or three amp load on it and see what happens, but uh, I'm going to do that. I'm trying to think. What I, oh, oh, oh. One thing I wanted to bring up, now that I remembered. Right. Now, everyone's seen these for iPhone chassis repairs. And when I was looking at these, I thought, yeah, I really want one of these. I really want one of these. These are going to be so great because... Where's my old device? Here we go. 
this here is my existing chassis straightening contraption. I'll put the chassis in. I've got a couple of uh, what is this? One mil thick aluminium shims that are set in the right places, and then I usually apply a more point-like pressure along the chassis at the right angle using this, or if it's in a delicate area, I use a nylon spudger. And that works fine, but it's a bit of a pain in the butt to uh, constantly be re, you know, spinning these off, putting them back on. I could get some fast, um, fast fasteners or something like that, but I don't know if they come in this size, where you can just push them down and then start screwing them up. Anyway, so that's worked for many years, but it is always a nuisance to work on it. Particularly if you, when you undo it and you find the chassis still hasn't straightened out enough and you've got to go and reapply it. So I thought, I'll grab one of these. Union Repair has them. These are going to be fantastic. They suck, and I'll tell you why. And you guys who have already got one will probably know why. I can fix it, but I shouldn't have to fix it. That's the problem. I'm just going to... Oh man, do I have a victim in here? Now you guys are straight. This is what I get for throwing out all my really bad stuff. Is that I'm left with nothing but good frames to work on. God damn it. Come on, Paul. you got to have something really bent in here. Ah, here we go. Why not? There we go. There you go. This, this is a nice, bent, nasty frame. And you think, yay, we're going to fix it. And you go, all right, I'm going to set that up there and there. And I'm going to apply pressure across that angle there. Yeah, this is going to work out so awesome. And first thing, it's not quite wide enough really for a success for the plus frame size. This doesn't handle plus size chassis. So there you go, that's a bit of... Uh, bit of unfair discrimination going on already. And you thought, alright, we'll get around that. We'll just play right on the edge. Of that. And you go, alright, this is where we want to put the pressure on, put the pressure on, put the pressure on. And you, you're going really well and you're like, yeah, this is good, good, good. And then you get to about here and you're like, what the fuck? I shouldn't swear. I'm on YouTube. But uh, really, you sort of go... Okay, it looks straight there. That's fantastic. But the trouble is you can't go any further than that. And if you know anything about metalwork, you know if you want to get that bend out, you have to actually push it beyond straight. You have to over flex it, over push it, like about another couple of millimeters at least, so that when you let it go, it springs back to straight. But these things won't let you go past dead straight. So all they're designed to do is to take the thickness of an iPhone press it straight into straightness like that, but it's no good because when you release it, there we go, it just comes on back. Like a bad nightmare. And look at that. Absolutely no effect. Completely freaking useless. So the way you fix this, well, you, it's not too hard to fix. Uh, if you go out and get some aluminium channel let's see what, what's this width 15 mil something around that and you either cap over so like you put a bit of u channeling man i'm not good at this yet over that and over that so that you lift up by at least another three or four mil so that when you do bring down the top press bars it will over, uh, yeah, it'll um, over bend the chassis so that when you release, it'll be straight finally. Put your shim under the, yeah, exactly, Cormac, yeah, five mil play. But that's just, the, it's the thing is, I don't know whether it's just the, because it's a clone, because this is not a legitimate G tool. I couldn't get any G tool ones, the originals, my supplier stops around them. I do have other G-Tool gear. It's not because I'm a cheapskate. I would have been happy to buy. Whoa, okay. You clearly want to make a statement about something. You can be quiet. 
Um, I'm happy to spend the money on a proper one, but I wonder whether the original G tool one also has this limitation that it won't go beyond uh, flat. Because yeah, you, you gotta be, you gotta go at least three four mil beyond that. Just can you just raise the chassis? Um, you mean? I suppose you could like drill out these, and bring it up a bit more. That's probably not a bad idea. That's an option. The only thing is, it, it will be a little bit tricky to get that just right. The easiest thing for me is just simply to put some um, capping over that, and that will solve the problem. But really, did these guys even try their piece of equipment that they cloned? Like, did they miss that? Like, if the G tool does it, then that's a pretty good example of why sometimes the originals are definitely better. Because perhaps the G tool people went, hey, you know, you've got to be able to go over over Unity on that. You've got to go a little bit further than flat. Whereas these guys sort of went, hey, look, we've got it flat. That's all we needed. The other issue I have with this particular one is that if you've got these two next to each other, you can't turn, see the the handle clashes with the other knob. So they really need to give another, about another four mil of height on that. So you could spin clear of that. Anyway, I guess that's what you get for picking up cheap stuff. But I'd be curious to know if anyone's got an original G tool version of this, whether it lets you go beyond zero. Swap the threaded rod for one twice as long. Uh, Paul, I did think about that. I was going to, but then when I took these out and undid the... So there's a grub screw in there. Um, what was it? I found it doesn't really work out so well. So definitely I think just putting a... Just putting an extra sort of bit of bulk on them is going to be the easiest solution overall. Yeah, exactly. Do to uh, anyway, so it's just something to watch out for. Um, it caught me off guard. I couldn't believe it because I thought, well, there's no way they must have straightened out a chassis with this ever, because there's the, they would have known straight away that does not work. Uh, well, things you find out. Uh, the idea is pretty good. Uh, the other thing I would actually like is either a th Okay, you gotta shut up because you're just being way too noisy. You do not deserve that amount of attention. Oh gross, I'm touching it with my bare hands. This is weird, it's um... It's responding intermittently to my... and it's upside down. Something else is wrong with this thing. Either it's just painfully slow. Power off. Oh, cracky. I gotta go wash my hands after this. Just gonna go wash my hands. First, I gotta get out of the office. Ah, crap. Paper towel saves the day. There's probably lead on that too. Greg M, I certainly hope the real McCoy does have longer threads because that would be a colossal oversight of their engineering department if it did not. It would make you seriously question their ability to do anything. Oh God. Uh, what have we got here? 
Ooh, you're the right. Okay. All right, let's have a look at the iPhone um, problem that I've got at the moment. Uh, I don't want you around here. I'm going to just relocate you over here with the rest of the fire. Two internet points to anyone else who knows what that's referencing to. Wayne, it's charging, but it just seems to intermittently not respond to the power button quite so well. I'll have a look in the morning. I'm really not... At least the battery... The person's given me the battery. They said, change the battery. I've changed the battery. If it still misbehaves, then that's up to them to decide if they're going to spend the money. I don't want to do anything more on it. <laughs> As it was, I'm not getting much money for that. Uh, where are we? Which one do I want? No, not you. Not you. Oh, you're the success. Uh, this is a sad story, this one. Sad little story. And I can't remember if last week I was working on an iPhone success that was severely water damaged. And let's see, oh, it's almost time to bring up the microscope again. I think I was showing Chris Long when he was in here. Let's have a look. Oh. Let's get some focus. There we go there. All right, yeah. So this is this was a severely water damaged. 6s you can see that uh, various bits and pieces like the backlights completely gone there I wiped that out it was causing trouble it wasn't worth putting back a whole bunch of stuff um, and I got this to boot I got it to boot up to the passcode and as you can see it doesn't have uh, audio doesn't have Stockholm it did have chestnut there and it did have chestnut um, Quail, anything else. This here is a replacement that was for, I think it's GPU rail. Uh, yeah, it's a major problem, uh, major de water damage. But it got up to the boot and it gave me the passcode option and I put in the passcode and then it just went, no thanks, and I hang, just hung there. So I thought, okay, I'll leave it till tomorrow. And I fired it up the next day and it gave me the Apple logo and then it just faded away and that was it that didn't work ever again after that it now all it does is give me a nice unpleasant 350 milliamp or so load and the worst thing is the only thing that's heating up is the cpu so i don't know what happened overnight maybe the gremlins came along and told it some terrible things let's see we'll get some power there Let's turn this thing on, which is these two here, and there we go, it's just stuck on, what have we got, 255 today, and the only thing heating up is the CPU, now it's probably, could be something else, I don't know what, all I know is that it's nothing like it was before, and I've tried changing a bunch of things, and it just won't change from that, so... You guys got any idea? Yeah, Dragon, I really hope not. Um, yeah, so this is the extent of the heat up. It seems to be coming from around about this area here, initially. But, who knows. Put pressure on top left and try restore. Uh, top left of what? Now, see, I mean, you mean this top left where pin one is, or what? Okay, let, let's put pressure on the CPU then. I'm pretty sure I got a little clamp around here. I think I thought I did. Maybe not.
How much pressure do I usually need? Yeah, well, look, I'll try. I'll just try and push on it, just for the hell of seeing if you're right there. Uh, duh, it's a six S, not a six. So used to working on sixes around here that I forget that six S sometimes exists. Right. Okay. All right, I'm pushing on the CPU. Let's. Now, nah, straight away, I'm at 250 again. Yep, yeah, back to 250, 260. Well, there's no short. There's no short. There wasn't a short originally. It just, the, like I said, it was booting fine, there was no short, and if there is a short, it's not anywhere on this board, it's in the CPU, or in that area, because it's not appearing anywhere else. Oh, anyway, at this stage it wouldn't even boot, because it doesn't have chestnut. I'd have to put chestnut and that uh, cap back on, a coil rather, if I was to have any chance of it coming up. Hey, Bobby. Chris Long. How much to replace the glass on my Samsung Cheapo J4000 fan? I paid 35 so don't try to rip me off. Uh, Chris, because you're a special customer, I will be giving you a bargain rate of $77.92, and that's with all taxes. And then I'll expect um, a tip of 50% and also a commission if it works of 100%. So that's just for you, buddy. Just for you. What the hell's that? That's, uh, that? that's not our problem that I can tell anyway. That's still intact, so I'm good there. By the way, I know that... I know that these two are connected. I just put it down there to stop any balls touching. Can't have your balls touching. Chestnut should still, yeah, that is true. It should still boot even without chestnut, or at least certainly go through a, a bit of a boot pattern. And I know that on this one because prior to me fixing it all up, because we did have a problem, the ultimate fault in the end was this coil here. It was, as you can tell by the pads, a complete ratchet. Um, it was destroyed. Uh, one of those veers, are the only veers coming up for that? But even still, even if you ignore that whole section, it was booting with current uh, proper current behavior until it just faded to black. Like I said, I don't know, after that I, I tried taking this off, I did, took everything off that I'd done work on prior, and it still just kept staying with that same behavior. So, yeah. I don't know. It's a bit of a disappointing. This is the one that came out real close to being fixed. I found glass on eBay for $3. I'll pay you $4 since I could do it myself because I fixed an iPhone 3G before. Ooh, you're a hard bargain to drive there. Um, better make that... I'll tell you what, you had a zero. Um, uh, make it a one and two zeros after that and I'll consider it. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, this is a really sad case of nearly was there to get the data off and then it just vanished. And I'm a little upset about that. I'm not sure whether it was something I completely did wrong or well, but as far as I could tell everything was going right. And then it just boom died on me. Uh what's this one? Uh this is another one I'm stuffing around. This is my own personal one. Um I've got a It had a Wi-Fi short, so I got that off. Didn't seem to cause too much trauma. It was a little scratchy up there, but it shouldn't have caused too much issue. And then, what's it doing now? 
I think this one boot just keeps leaving around. I've forgotten. That's great. As I said, these are phones I'm just simply working on to try and solve for myself. 120, 100. Hey, you beat. Oh, that's right, yeah. This one tries to boot, but then gives up. It, it goes into a short state or it resets. So when it's cold, it will boot. When it's not cold, it um, yeah, misbehaves. But I haven't been able to find the cause of it. The phone originally came in with extreme heat on the Wi-Fi chip. And it was very hard to get it to stay on for very long at all. And I managed to get it to stay on long enough. And I got the data off. At which point the person just sort of said, There you go, you can have it. See if you can, you yeah, know, whatever you want to do with it. And so I was like, beautiful. So I thought I'd give it a shot. And unfortunately, it's still persisting with its behavior. Tried a lot of different things. And so far, I haven't found the winning combo. Let's see if... So, wasting a lot of my time on these, but it's probably good uh, learning experience, I guess. There we go. Let's see, here we go. Uh, turn on. So we get that. 170, 200. Oh, that's right, it reboots after about 10 seconds. 166, one, there we go. And it completely blacks out. The backlight even resets on that. So I'm not sure. Chris, what do you think of that? So it goes there, and the backlight goes out, and then it starts up again. 180, 230, 250, 230, 220, 350, 450, 200. And it just keeps doing that. It does the same with the battery in it. It's not the same as when you just power it through the lightning port. The lightning port reboot is quicker than that. Chris Long charges more, Paul. I heard him today say 20% off a new iPhone screen, 50% off for having to clean and dry all... Uh, clean all the dry wall shit out. Oh, man. Yeah, the stuff you find in some of these phones, I tell you. Uh... Uh, what's this one? Oh, this is a portal. This one here I've been using as a parts phone. This was a water damaged but known working phone. So it was written off and yeah, the other person got a new phone. Well, it was just too too much damage around the place. But it's been a really good parts board. So yeah, a lot of phones have been revived by that single board alone. Uh, this is a success. Yeah, it's the fade to black success. I don't even know what these two are. One of them is a one that I call my um, shame board. And the reason why it's my shame board is because I worked on it probably a little sooner than I should have, about a year and a half ago. And it's just one of those boards that you look back on and you think, you know, I really shouldn't have touched that damn thing. Um, all of this ended up having to be replaced. No, there's no CPU balls popping out or anything like that. Um, I'm trying to think what the fault on this one was. But now I've got no, <coughs> no boost. That's not a problem. No backlight. I don't really care about that. I've got my messer and I've got my chestnut. So I... Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, everything else is up there. Doing stupid stuff like, hey, there's a short, but it's not really. I'm just popping off caps for no good reason. Um, that was definitely shorted. That was the speaker. Uh, what was this here? Crap, forgotten what that was. Is that 
Q3 or whatever it is. No, no, that's what that is there. And I've replaced that, and I've replaced that, and all that. And now, I can't even remember now what the fault is on this. It's not even anything half alive at all. So yeah, I've got a fair number of these sort of phones just floating around. Like I said, they're not customer jobs, they're just phones that I've collected, and I thought, yeah, I'll give it a shot, see if I can get anywhere with it. Sadly, most of them I can't. I'm sure if Jessa or Mark or Chris is, looks over these things, they're probably going, oh, you idiot, they're probably easy to fix. Yeah. Oh, that's right, this one goes 150, well, yeah, it just sort of goes 150, restart, 150, restart, 150, restart. The boot is too high to start with. Any shorts with the pool? No, no shorts on the Wi-Fi pads. Does the fan spin when it boots? <laughs> I'll spin in my chair. That'll, that'll be good enough. Why I have Guru Apple Tech working for me so I don't have to learn this? Uh, well, Chris, I, I can't even get... Oh, that was the other thing. With the 6S one, the one that faded to black, it never had any communications on the USB port. I tried, I tested it and all that, but I couldn't get anything. And that, I even checked the TriStar. I did a bunch of other things, and it just wasn't responding at all that I could see. What are you, which one are you? I think... You, yeah, where's my scratch mark on you? If you're a shame phone, then you should have a scratch mark on you. I'm still pretty sure this is my shame phone. Anyway. Yeah, so, yeah, the last week or so I've been, at night, I'd come along and I'd just try working at these, trying to find out what's going on, but, yeah. Did you do software update to the looping iPhone? Are you talking about the Wi-Fi one? Uh, is it this one here? This is the one that... Um, yeah, the non-stop loop. No, I haven't tried a software. No, that's not it. That's... Where are you? I need a better way of marking my iPhones, to be honest. Oh, it's in the phone itself, you idiot. Thing is, Chris, I would have thought that if it's looping like that... Uh, let me go get a... Let me go get a lightning cable. Seems no matter how many of those lightning cables I order, I never have enough. Okay, let's go get a lightning cable. Usually means I2C issue, a main power rail short, it's low amp. I thought it might be the I2C. I went along and checked all the I2C right, resistors and rails and things like that, and everything came up okay when I compared to another device. But it's not to say there isn't a problem there. I'll just keep looking. Watching there's no time pressure on me. Looks like we've got another person nearly dying out there with the helicopter coming in. So, let's hold this button down and see if I can... I'll laugh if this goes into iTunes mode. Fuck me. It did. Check it out. Chris, looks like I owe you one. Damn you. I'll tell you what, Chris, I'll send you a um, open broadcast switcher for you. So you earn that. Got another IP7 in today, audio problems, which struggled to restore, and then I got to restore, and they had audio codec problem. So I rebuild the audio I see, ran. Oh, yeah, yeah, that jump there, yeah. There we go. 4013. Jeez, fixing things, I probably would have tossed that already. 
so Chris, why... Uh, I'm going to genuinely ask you here. This phone was booting. And... Um, no, because I got the data off it before the customer gave it to me. And then it kept doing this short problem where it just kept cycling like that. Um, so... I guess I'm sort of to work out is what causes this to happen. Uh, obviously, you thought straight away to do a software fix, um, considering that it was working prior. I guess I'm a little confused about that. Audio IC and baseband. P Mech are going to be the new Touch IC. That being on, I'm getting a lot of people complaining about the sevens being quite fragile. Um, at the moment, I'm still referring them to Apple or other people because I'm just not really in the mood to deal with them. I've got more important jobs like pulling crappy batteries out of Samsung Tab 3s and taking touch screens off. Yeah, I, I'm doing the real hard work out here. Uh, anyway, with the audio I see on, and the baseband, is it the PMIC or the baseband? Because like I see both of those have the like the M1 jumper type fixes. Um, is that what you're referring to? So basically, it's all the same technical, physical fault type problem. I'm getting a fair few people going to holding on to their iPhone sixes now and six S's because they're sort of like seeing what's happening or hearing bad things about the seven, and a lot of people going to the SE. Um, I had one chap today. He's got a six S. I just fixed up his screen and he's due for a renewal very shortly and he said he's going to go to an SE because he, yeah, it's too expensive to keep fixing the screens on the 6S and he doesn't want to have to go pick up the dramas with the 7 and the 8. Alright, well, um, Chris, thank you again. Uh, but seriously, Chris, if you want, uh, I'm happy to send you one of these switcher boards if you're interested. Just let me know. Send me a message. I've got, well, I've got one here, all ready to go. It's my original prototype. I can put a signature on it. This is a number one signature series open broadcast switcher. It's the baseband P Mac. Okay. Well, what what's the? So it's not the baseband chip itself. It's just the P Mac. Or because I was seeing a few videos ago that uh, people were removing the baseband IC and fixing up, I think it was V1 and U1 balls. Is the battery in a good... Yeah, this battery is good. It's a fresh one that I've put in. Uh, and I was also doing this when I was running on the power supply. Are you suspecting maybe it went into the um, beloved Aero 26 fault? Chris doesn't switch though. Good point. He doesn't switch. So you don't need it, Chris. I'm going to give it to some other needy person. Um, I'll probably send it to Jason. SDS Jason. Because he's got a similar sort of setup. He'll probably um, enjoy it. Especially considering it's just a prototype. So if he sort of goes, nah, this doesn't work out, then you can just throw it in the bin. Or hand it off to someone else in the Americas. Seen phone work, phones work one time after liquid damage repair, and then on next boot, post error 27, we have which is a software corruption. Uh, maybe it's the base band itself that has. Which is, oh, well, yeah, really, guys, I do tend to prefer the laptop repairs. Uh, most of me working on the iPhone repairs is out of necessity. I really shouldn't gripe about it. I mean, it's good that I've even got people sending stuff to me to be fixed, but. Um, there's such a massive investment of time into these. Um, I think if you're not doing it 24-7, okay, maybe not 24-7. If you're not doing it as your everyday thing, I think it's quite difficult to get a grasp of everything really quickly. I would say I probably wouldn't really be advertising services maybe for another six months or so, whereas the laptops, I'm fine with the laptops. You can throw them my way and you know, I'm good for that. But uh, the iPhones, I'm a little bit uh, hesitant on still. Oh, okay, Chris. Well, I'll send you one. Um, you can... I'll, I'll send you a message. You can either... 
I, I have this particular one. This is like the number 0001 build. With the this doesn't have clicky switches. This is just a straight normal switch. Whereas, you know, I've now got the blue clicky switches on the new ones. That said, you know, the blue clicky switches don't really make that much of a difference. I was planning on going for version 2, which is going to maybe have a audio um, level indicator on the board, but I'm still trying to work on the software side of that. Uh, there's a few, it's going to be a bit of a hackery, and it probably won't work that well with Windows, so the standard switch is probably what you're going to be happy enough with. All right, well, I don't have my Windows machine here, so I can't make this go into um, update. This is just running off Linux at the moment. But there is a way for me to upload a new firmware into it, but I really haven't tried that. When it comes to doing the updates and things like that, I just use 3U tools like everybody else. Mm, pardon me. Mm, no, that was the real burp. All right. Anyway, well, in that case, I think I'm going to finish up. Yeah, Paul, the audio level is, I mean, I would really like it because many a time, like if I mount it up here, there's been plenty of times where, well, Lewis today, or what was it? Yeah, it was today, or was it yesterday, when he was doing the iPhone power brick video. You know, I had no idea that his audio was off and everyone's screaming at him and because he's not looking at the um, screen, the comments, but if maybe he had a open broadcaster console switcher uh, status indicator then you would have seen that a bit quicker I would like to do more with it uh, I need to learn more about how the USB um, data communications works it's obviously a lot more complicated than straight serial you have to set up things properly it may even require me to register for a unique vendor product ID but I don't know if you can do that anymore as an individual. You used to be able to through OBDev or VUSB. They had a um, program where they bought a block of USB IDs and then you could just buy one for yourself. But I don't think that, um, you can do that anymore, which is unfortunate because in my case, like I would probably in my lifetime no, need no more than two or three IDs. I don't want to go and buy a block of 100. Fixing things, I'd love a switcher. How much? Um, I'll, I'll send you a message and we'll work that out. I've worked in IT, but because of Lewis SES stuff, I've gotten back into electrical pairs. Yeah, well, Tony, I was pretty much the same um, until I bumped into Lewis. I mean, I was doing some electronics work, but mostly it was a, a retired type thing because I was m doing design and manufacturing. I uh, wasn't really doing the repair stuff other than occasionally people would bring in broken connectors or you know, obvious type things. But then I had someone push a MacBook 1278, I think it was, onto me and I bumped into Lewis on YouTube, which then led me on to Open Board View, which yeah, it just all cascaded from there and so here we are. All right, okay i got to go. It's um, almost 2 o'clock in the morning. I've got to go catch a couple of episodes of the Netflix Dark series, which is a German sort of version of um, damn, Stranger Things, except it's about time loops instead of worlds. It's pretty good. Uh, a few episodes to go yet. Anyway, so I'm going to go watch that after this. And Chris, thank you very much. I will give that a will, and I'll see what happens, and I'll let you know. So you all take care. I'll see you guys next time.